Hey, Ron Janish here. Uh, this is a very unfancy presentation. Now, even though it is unfancy, not like the other ones with all the spectacular graphics and stuff, uh, you may find what's in here fairly useful. So stick around. It's not a long one. Okay, let's. A lot of this is what I'm going to be reading to a group on this Saturday. Investing is putting your money into something that you know will give you a future profit. Everything else is speculation. Now, some investors use technical analysis. Is technical analysis a science? Is it an art form or is it something else? I mean, effective technical analysis, that is. Now, an art form would mean that it is a belief and it is emotion driven. And for many, technical analysis is uh, pure art. Now, others follow their beliefs and construct elaborate computer driven trading systems, hoping to make money with lots of optimization. For them, this is a science. But what's so is that scientists don't believe in theories. They observe them. Let's put a comma here. They do research, probably with a computer, often using indicators they have a limited understanding of, which in some combination show profits and risks they find acceptable on historical data. Okay. Now, true confession here, the first one I found was the 18.6 crossover moving average in T-bills. Please don't go and test it out. This was in the 1980s testing using an Apple II computer on a product by Paul Raybridge that was called Orion Software. Now, the test showed high profits, over 70% winners, and then it became a great money loser as interest rates went down in the 1980s. Now, sometimes you get lucky. To this day, I have a mechanical model that has had 100% winning trades in studies far over 50 years. Now, these have been verified by other people who I've never met, yet have a deep understanding of markets. I have observed this system for over six years. It still does not have one losing trade. It's the last trade it made. It doubled the profits. It was, it was that big of a profit. And right now it happens to be out of the market. Still not a losing trade. As a scientist, it is perfectly acceptable to show audiences hypothetical studies, which are well optimized and get them excited about your discoveries. After all, pharmaceutical companies do this all the time. They publish studies that they believe will result in greater profits. Not necessarily the ones that will result in an advantage for the competition, of course. Now, Let's, let's look at something. Once upon a time, there were ads for cigarettes. Every doctor in private practice was asked. And they discovered more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. Hmm. Okay. Uh, now, now, this one is priceless. Dr. Batty's For Your Health asthma cigarettes all diseases of the throat not recommended for children under six uh, i wouldn't give it to kids over six either or anybody over six uh, many traders spend years searching for the perfect combination of indicators now there is another option and that is 
not being an artist or a scientist, but being a craftsman, using technical analysis as a craft. First, you learn to use the tools effectively without ever trying to make money. You learn to master three or four tools and the various concepts connected with them. And you learn how to use them and when to use them. Now, prior to applying technical analysis, the craftsman will often find a, a trend that is already in progress. In an investment, perhaps he uses fundamental factors to find the right investment. Personally, what I used uh, to teach were methods of high probability when I used to teach this stuff. Technical analysis and focus upon them for entry and exit. I wanted to know when to get in and when to get out. That's what my students wanted to know. Now, not all of the techniques that I taught were relevant all of the time. So those of you that like the 200 day moving average, well, uh, if we used it, we would use it only in certain cases. Now with technical analysis, a craftsman's indicators are only used when they are relevant. A craftsman would not use a hammer when a saw is appropriate or a saw when a screwdriver will do the job best. I will show you some examples using tech that I have shared before and show you how actual, with real money, results are made from those trades. Now, as you may recall, many months ago, I explained why I was long TBF. TBF goes up as interest rates go up. And what you see here is taken from an actual account of mine at Merrill Lynch. These are the actual trades. This is the actual result. These are all the trades. Now, and if you if you saw my prior video, which was, uh, I, I think I labeled it final, using a leveraged stock to trade. Oh, here, what I did was I put this here on and I wound up going long around here somewhere when prices came down to the median line. And up we went. And uh, I wound up selling up here. Sure, I did some trades in the middle, but this is where I took off the position and said, thank you, I'm out of here. Now, so this trade was put on in July and August and got out in October. Uh, the fundamental factor was real simple. Our interest rates were going up. Now, using a leveraged stock a trade was put on in July and August, and as you can see, not as perfect as the unleveraged stock. Let's take a look. So when I got out the unleveraged stock, it was, well, I got out of this one here, but uh, the unleveraged stock was up here at the time. It was, it was on this day here, rather. And what I'm trying to say is, is that this these leveraged stocks, that you see, like this is TBT, for example. These uh, do not perform as, I don't want to say as well, but as, uh, as prettily, so to speak, as, as beautifully as the regular stocks do. It's just, that's just the way it is. Now, leveraged futures are different. It is up to the technical analysis craftsman to determine what method will be used to determine the entry area and exits. The craftsman does this by knowing what's so about price behavior. What does that mean? Hmm. Well, when it comes down to test a correction low, for example, where does price often reverse? And what does price not achieve? Two questions that we will quickly find the answer to. 
Okay, so here we see a low, high, low. This was the all-time low, and then it went up and down. All-time low for this time period. These are hourly bars. So we can see here that as price came down, we drew the median line, and price did not close below it. Typically, when price tests a prior low, price will not close beyond the median line. That's the concept. Uh, it, it, it looks fantastic. Uh, it won't make you rich, trust me on this. I'm going to show you how this can get messy and complicated. When it comes down to that test point, what line does it bounce off of? Well, what you do is you draw the median line with the prior three pivots, and it often dr drops down to that line. Okay, another line to draw is probably the, what's called the major ML, and it'll, it'll come near that also. Okay, so this is the same point as uh, the other one. Now, sometimes market gets get messy after these two patterns. As a craftsman, you know to how to handle things when they get messy. All right. Now, as is well known in the stock market, it's presently in a downtrend, or, or was anyway, when I was putting this together. And when a signal is seen just before the Fed November announcement, a short position was put on in NASDAQ mini futures. I used a technique that I shared with this with the meetup group and on the on on the web a few months ago and was told that if anybody actually makes money with it, report it to the meetup group. I thought that was a rather interesting comment. So here's an example. Okay of this particular concept. We see one, one, two, three, four, five waves up, and one, two, we had two. And notice that this, this high here was higher than this high here. And you had a little peekaboo outside, and that's called an SH, or a sliding parallel. And then you see prices went down. And then prices went up above that line, above that sliding parallel line, which, by the way, is parallel to the median line parallel here and parallel to the median line. And then the concept goes, price comes back inside, closes inside this MLH line, this median line parallel, and then down we go for a while. Very simple. So I participated in that, and uh, the result was, after putting on just a few mini contracts, eh, very little risk, uh, was a net of $5,000 and change, as you can see here, in the futures market. Okay, so why did I get out down here? Well, because the target is one, two, three, draw our median lines, boom. We can see we went went below it. We got out. Prices closed below the median line. Boom. Hey, we're out of there. That was the target for that particular pattern. As a craftsman, you learn different patterns and the associated targets. Now, here you can see a profitable trade that was put on in early June. And the June trade used the same entry technique as the NASDAQ trade that I just showed you. And this trade was put on um, in the stock, in the, using an ETF. Let's take a look at this. Okay. So this was the low. Went inside, came outside. Right? Here was your SH, okay? Prices below, broke below that, that parallel line had you drawn it. 
and then close back in side this bigger fork here and then up she went and as a result as you can see profits were taken I tried this a second time uh, a little bit later and uh, got out quickly for a small loss not all trades in with technical analysis are winners now what about exchange traded funds that are actually built by craftsmen well here's one it's known as DBC and this one primarily focuses upon uh, commodities so if somebody wanted a stock an ET exchange traded fund stock that has gold silver wheat corn all that good kind of stuff in it in a specific formula uh, this is one another one is this one here this is PDBC okay this one's rather innovative this one's a little different so make sure you read the prospectus before you go in I mean you're gonna look at this and say well gee this guy started at 10 bucks and wound up as DBC started at 10 bucks and wound up at 30 as the high for the year okay that's that's cool but this one here started at five bucks wound up at 20 okay fourfold but along the way paid a five dollar dividend huh Wow uh, that's kind of interesting so what's the difference take a look look under the hood and see what you find it's all available online all that information now here's another one uh, G, this is run by JP Morgan this is a trust and what these guys do is they have uh, certain stocks that are in the S&P 500 and as I understand it what they do is they uh, they, they either sell covered options or write options or something with options and generate income and the amount of income they generate is somewhere around 11% a year. That's pretty nifty. And notice that as price went up, it went up to the median line. And over here, you draw your next median line. As price went up, went up to the median line. Interesting little something that's uh, worth seeing there. Now here's another stock. I bought and this one is called GDM or a symbol is GDMN it's wisdom tree efficient core efficient gold or whatever this one's a little different this is not your run-of-the-mill gold stock you, you need to read the perspective go to the wisdom tree site and see what that is these are some of your more modern funds exchange traded funds that that are run by craftsmen okay so oh now there are some of you that are wondering hmm where is a place to put your money with is pretty much no risk well I like Basque Bank Basque Bank what the heck is that well it's a bank that's paying me right now 3.6% uh, APY on anything in a regular interest account and the majority of the money I have in Basque Bank is in a different account where I get mileage instead of cash I get mileage for American Airlines a substantial amount every month so uh, take a look at Basque Bank and uh, if you want a place to put your money um, they, it's just a place you can you know you have your regular checking account at whatever bank you like or, and you just kind of transfer money back and forth over the web okay that's that's all it is anyway I thank you for your attention and uh, I will not leave you with the wisdom of WD GAN this time
and so may prosperity be with you we're already in november so uh happy holidays